this session, we will discuss the key components that are common to every trading strategy, no matter how complex. I hope this foundation will help guide you as you develop more advanced strategies using machine learning techniques. By the end of this session, you will understand the different types of entry and exit rules. You will also know what type of market data you need to develop strategies made up of endogenous and exogenous trading rules. Lastly, you will construct a strategy that incorporates these rules. To begin, let's talk about the entries and exits of trading. We'll discuss entry signals and exit signals. These are the key features that define an algorithmic trading model. In the context of algorithmic trading, I think this is the most important way to describe a model. In fact, you can summarize an algorithmic trading model by describing its entry and exit signals. Algo traders are objective, metric-driven, and focused on dispassionate risk management. Discretionary traders, on the other hand, often bet huge sums on hunches, beliefs, intuition, gut feelings, or opinions. Their strategies are subject to shifts in attitudes, emotions, energy level, and are heavily skewed by recent memory. Decisions will be affected by their P&L month to month or year to date in an attempt to end the year up in profits. Risk tolerance will change as they may take greater risks to offset losses or to have one sizable trade to make them profitable. The algorithmic trader avoids these issues by being objective up front. Objectivity requires a rule for trade entry. Overall, there can be two types of entry rules. The first is an endogenous entry rule. This means you use a rule based purely on the security you're trading. In this section, we are going to explore the use of endogenous rules when you only have access to price and volume data on the asset you're trading and exogenous rules where you are able to improve your trading performance with other data sources. For example, you might say buy Apple if the price goes below 200. This rule requires you only to watch Apple's share price. Naturally, you will need to have a real-time feed to observe the price of Apple. When Apple trades below 200, you submit a buy order. You can stipulate more complicated endogenous rules. For example, buy Apple if the price hits a 10-day low. Again, this rule requires you only to watch Apple, but you also need to have an up-to-date record of the 10-day low. Let's look at one more endogenous example. You may say, buy Apple if the volume exceeds the previous day's volume and the closing price is lower than the daily average. You still only need to watch Apple, but you also need to monitor both price and volume. The stock's volume is part of its trading history. Essentially, a stock's history consists of price and volume traded. You can see in this graph that your endogenous rule would cause you to buy Apple on November 20th when Apple closed at about $177. Apple subsequently traded as low as $171 before recovering to about $180. But what if you want to use other data? Then you would use an exogenous rule. An exogenous rule requires you to watch not only Apple, but other securities or data values as well. For example, you might say, buy Apple if Microsoft's price falls 5%. You may think that lower sales of Microsoft computers may mean increased sales of Macs. Now, you must also track the price of Microsoft. Here's an exogenous rule based on macro data. Buy Apple if the U.S. unemployment rate decreases. You see less unemployment as a stronger economy. You believe this optimism can translate into higher equity prices for Apple. Therefore, you base your entry signal on macroeconomic reports. These economic indicators get announced at specific times, so it's easy for you to prepare for such trades around events. Let's look at another example of an exogenous rule, this time driven by fundamental data. Buy Apple if reported quarterly sales increases or profits exceed analyst expectations. While this rule may get you in the market late, you can see it involves more than Apple's price. 
Here you have to get Apple's sales and earnings data. This data is not part of Apple's stock history, so it is exogenous. Let's try to understand the difference between endogenous and exogenous a bit better. We'll start with endogenous. If you only use a stock price and volume, you essentially believe that the data itself contains the information for you to initiate a trade. You look for patterns using the prices and volumes of the stock. Essentially, you're looking for some type of extrapolation of the historic data. That is, you believe there is some structure to the data by looking at the series itself. You may want to take a different approach. You may want to use other securities like you did with Microsoft. This makes your model exogenous. You may want to use the company's fundamental data like sales or profitability. In that case, you're saying that exogenous variables help influence the future prices. It takes more than extrapolation. It requires a synthesis of different types of data. Similarly, you may want to use economic data. You can use the level of unemployment or inflation or consumer confidence or any of the numerous economic indicators that affect markets. We might also use more complicated factors like monetary policy. For example, you predict that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates. Perhaps you will want to buy stocks, particularly Apple. You can use geopolitical predictions as well. For example, if you believe there will be a trade war, you will want to sell stocks like Apple. You can get data from other markets. For example, if the options on Apple show decreased volatility, you may want to buy Apple. The whole idea is that if you use extra variables, there are a variety of ways you can construct and specify rules. You use this approach if you have strong beliefs that knowing these extra variables can give you better predictions than the price and volume alone. This is where machine learning helps tremendously. In the industry, we see that endogenous rules tend to come from technical analysis. We have different names for groups that tend to make exogenous rules. These are quantitative trading groups or statistical arbitrage groups or simply strategists. 